ever pondered whether this bull market is a trap for the money-hungry lambs? There's an inside joke on Wall Street that when a taxi driver starts giving you stock tips, you know the party's over. Is it? Today, we'll delve into a core topic. The commercial real estate market. Is it concrete gold or concrete junk? Fear of missing out is everywhere. At every gas station, on every shopping trip, everyone wants to share how well they're doing with their cryptocurrencies and their MSCI World Champions funds, ETFs, and so on. This generally makes me nervous. The commercial real estate market is certainly a baby elephant in the room. But what else is going on is an elephant herd. Listen and pay close attention. According to Goldman Sachs, a potential credit crunch in the commercial real estate market could have far-reaching effects on the overall economy. It could lead to a slowdown in lending, a decline in business investments, and negative impacts on economic growth. Vacant offices and commercial properties can adversely affect the tax base. With lower property values and lower tax revenues, local governments could face budget problems and struggle to finance essential services. And several small and medium banks could be driven to ruin. The first graphic shows a steady increase in bankruptcies since January 2022. This is just a small focus point since one could argue that like the last banking crisis, the banks gambled because they bought long-term US Treasury bonds. They actually squandered roughly two trillion. What does the US Securities and Exchange Commission do? The regulator says, you know what, let's suspend the accounting guidelines. We'll just shove aside the losses of several billion you have. It's as if nothing happened. Wow. And by the way, we're now opening the tap and we're flushing 700 billion US dollars of emergency funds into your balance sheet. Bank crisis one, bank crisis two, we're already deep into it, as evidenced by all these bankruptcies. Every child knows by now that mobile developers are suffering, construction projects are failing and this industry is in a bad state. What could they come up with this time? Well, they're already driving down interest costs so that so-called emergency funds can be picked up at central banks in Europe and the US from crisis to crisis to crisis. But it's hard to handle them all. We easily forget about the zombie firms. 10% in the US, between 15 and 20% in America. The small graphic explains it better than I can. Marcus Grohl has already written a lot about this. I don't want to out myself further on this topic. Thinking out of the box. Has anyone ever dealt with deaths due to overdoses of fentanyl? To wrap up, we encourage you to delve deeper, ask more questions, and never stop learning. The world of finance and economics is a complex one, but with careful navigation and a spirit of inquiry, you can thrive amidst the challenges. Tune in next Sunday as we continue to dissect these intriguing topics. Until then, keep your eyes open and stay informed.